If I had a dollar every time somebody asked me, What color is my rabbit? I'd probably have enough to rent a nice little Airbnb on the beach, complete with a cabana boy. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Not the cabana boy, but rabbit coat colors. Whether you have a rabbit and you're not quite sure what the color is, or you would like to learn a little bit more about rabbit color genetics and the different color groups, then this is a video you are not going to want to miss. Stick around. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed by the length of this video, I don't blame you. So I'm going to put chapters down below so you can skip around, fast forward, rewind, so you can find just the information that you were seeking. But I highly recommend you do watch the whole video at some point if you would like to have the most immersive experience about rabbit color genetics. This video is by no means a comprehensive guide to rabbit color types and color genetics. It's just a brief introduction. I'm going to be focusing on Holland Lops because that's what I know and raise. So if you have a different breed, please understand that there is a lot of overlap between what the different coat colors are called, but there are also some differences. So what might be called one thing in Holland Lops might have a different color name in your breed of rabbit. For that reason, I highly recommend those interested in showing or breeding or 4-H, or you just want to know more about your rabbit breed to pick up a copy of the American Rabbit Breeders Association Standard of Perfection. That's a mouthful, isn't it? So Arba publishes this handy little guide and there are over 40 different rabbit breeds listed in here. It lists coat colors as well as the standard desired body type for your particular rabbit breed. The second book that I recommend you consider buying if you would like to learn more about rabbit color genetics is About Bunny Colors by Ellen Eddy. This is how I learned rabbit color genetics. So especially for those of you who are thinking of breeding rabbits or showing, or you just want to learn more about rabbit color genetics because you're looking for some light reading, then this might be a book that you'd like to pick up. I have used this for years. In fact, it's starting to fall apart because I have used it so much. If you're just here for the quick and dirty information to help decide what color your bunny is, let's take a look at the color chart that I have on my website. This is a chart of pictures I have taken of my Holland Lop rabbits over the years, and it's organized basically by color. If you think your rabbit could be an orange color, take a look at the nose and underneath the chin and on the stomach area. An orange rabbit has the agouti gene, and that will change the pattern of the coloring in these areas. You'll see eye rings, nose rings, and white underbelly and underneath their chin. Now, if your bunny is a broken coloring like Camilla here, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but take a look around her nose. Do you see that lighter ring of orange there? And her eyes will have it too. Same thing here on Kaylee. Look at the white around her eyes. That tells you most likely you have a rabbit with the agouti gene accompanied with the orange coloring. You can be pretty certain you have an orange rabbit. Similar to orange and actually only one gene different is the cream coloring. Here is Sunny Jim, my bunny here. He's orange. And then this is a previous bunny named Envy and she is a broken cream. Cream is, well, very creamy. It is diluted. It's the dilute version of orange. So you take orange, you instead of the dense gene, you have the dilute gene, and it just adds a little bit of the grayish color to it. And as the creams age, they tend to get more of that grayish on them. This is my rabbit Cora, and she definitely has a lot of that grayish bluish on her nose, mouth area, and on the ears. Just like the orange, the cream bunnies also have the agouti gene. So you will see the agouti markings. Look on here, it says no white markings. Underneath her stomach, 
chin, nose ring, eye rings, you can see that all here on the creams. Again, with the broken versions, it does make it a bit more difficult, but you can tell the difference between orange and cream. Orange is a more vibrant coloring. It can have some of this black ticking like you see on Sunny Jim, but it is a more saturated color than the cream. Here we have some Frosties or Frosted Pearl as it is often called. This is a chinchilla based color, but it does not have the full extension gene. So that coloring just can't extend on most of the body. You will see some blacker colors here on the ears and the nose area. This is a broken Frosty. This is a bunny I had named Luna. And it's tough with Frosties because they don't have a lot of coloring and it seems to take a while as they mature before some of that coloring appears. So we have a broken Frosty here as just a little baby. This is a Charlie Frosty. Now Charlie just means less than 10% coloring. So you have the solid bunnies and then you have the broken versions that they have one copy of the broken gene. And then if a rabbit gets two copies of the broken gene, they become a Charlie of that color and they will have very little coloring. Typically on their ears, you'll see a little bit maybe on the nose as a full or partial butterfly. But Frosties are similar to Chintilla like you see here, but they have a lot more white on them. I really like the Frosty color. And then sometimes Frosties can be sable based. Instead of being chin based, a sable frosty is chin light based, chinchilla light or the shaded gene or the sable gene. It's kind of confusing, but you can notice the difference a little bit more of a brown based than a regular frosty that's chinchilla based. The same thing with chinchillas, they can be sable chinchilla and then it has more of a brown cast to it. I don't have a picture of a sable chinchilla, but that's a sable frosty. Here we have some broken chinchillas. This is my bunny Hazel and here is Hazel, the broken chinchilla, and her mom, Bella. The coloring's a little bit off there due to the sunlight, but that's just the solid version and the broken version. These are better pictures of that. You will notice that chinchilla is also an agouti color, so you do have those agouti markings of the nose ring, the eye rings, and the white underbelly. These are a couple of oddball colors, and there are a lot of oddball colors, so we're going to kind of glaze over them and let's move on to the chestnut. This is the most dominant color and that's the main color of wild rabbits. So we have solid chestnut. It's a brown. You have the black ticking in there. It is also an agouti color. You can see here in the broken chestnut, you see that nose ring. And then we have the Charlie chestnut. So solid, you add one copy of the broken gene, you get the broken chestnut. Two copies of the broken gene, you get a Charlie chestnut, less than 10% color. He has a cute little butterfly here. It's a partial butterfly on his nose. That's what they call those markings. That's Luigi. So then you take a chestnut and you dilute it. You just change that one gene and you get an opal. This is my rabbit moose when he was a baby. So it's just like chestnut, but you turn it more gray. Again, it's an agouti color, so you have the agouti markings. That is an opal. This is a broken opal. The lighting is not accurate. It is actually a gray color and it looks brown though. Now let's move along to some shaded colors. So if your rabbit does not have the agouti markings, the nose rings, the eye rings, white underbelly, but they do have shading around the ears, the muzzle, the nose, the front of the face and the feet. Your bunny very well could have the sable gene and be a sable based color, or like the torts, it could have a couple other genes that cause that shading. So Mabel here is a sable point. She is an accurate, true sable point. And what I mean by that is a lot of times people will call something like this sable point. And you notice the difference in Mabel has a nice clean white body saddle area. And then this one, it's more smutty. That's what they call that. And that's because there are two copies of the sable gene in this bunny. Mabel has one and her other gene in that locust is actually a ruby eye white or albino gene. So that's why it says ruby eye white based. That is the accurate sable point color. A lot of times you'll see people call this sable point and that's really a seal point, but 
a lot of times you just see it called sable point. This is a broken sable point. Actually, I believe it's a seal point, two copies of the shaded jean. So you take this sable point, Mabel up here, and this is her daughter, Maggie. And Maggie is the dilute version of sable point. So she is called blue point. And if you look at her points, her ears, her mouth and nose area, her feet, it is darker just like the sable point, but it is more gray or blue as they call it. And here's a comparison between sable point and blue point. <laughs> She's so cute. Then we have the seal and Siamese sable color, which are also sable based colors. They are full extension. The jean allows that color to extend fully and so you get a much darker color. Siamese sable, you can see has a little bit of a brown cast but then the points look almost black. And then seal, seal is a tough one because they really look black. If you look carefully on a seal, you can see just a subtle brownish tone to them. And this is my rabbit Molly. She is the daughter of Timmy. I know she is a seal because I know the genetics of her parents and that that was possible. As a baby, she had just the slightest hint of brown to that black coloring other than having shaded points another hint that your rabbit has the sable gene is you might see a reddish cast to their eyes which molly did have and sometimes rabbits with reddish cast to their eyes will kind of scan their head back and forth it just has to do with how their eyes see the shadows and the light and it just helps them to survey and get an accurate perception of their environment. There's nothing wrong with them when they do that, but sometimes they can do that. Now we are to the torts. They also have shading, but it is not due to the sable gene. It is due to a combination of two other genes. Now in my area of the United States, this is probably hands down the most common color of Holland Lop is the black tort. Tort just stands for a tortoise shell. And then this is the broken black tort. Not the best picture because it's a baby, but you can tell here the tort color, it's a light medium brown. There is some orange cast to it, but then like in the sable points, the points will be darker, almost black here. And this is a black based tort, so the points will be black. And then you have the blue based tort and it is a bluish gray on the points. And you have that same creamy, light orange brown color here just a little bit more diluted in the blue tort compared with the black tort and then we have my anna she's a broken blue tort super cute color not as common as the black tort notice there is the absence of the nose ring the eye rings the white tummy because this is not an agouti color now we are getting to the solid base colors black blue chocolate and lilac in fact all rabbits are based on either a black color, a blue, chocolate, or a lilac. This is solid blue, broken blue, another solid blue, and then you can compare that with the black and broken black. Now go down here, we have a chocolate, and down here we have chocolate compared with lilac. You might think that lilac is similar to blue, and you are right, but if you look here at the baby picture, here is black compared with blue, lilac, and that's chocolate tort, which I'll talk about here in a second. But just comparing the blue and the lilac, you see the lilac just has a slight pinkish reddish hue to it. That is the diluted version of chocolate. You take black and you dilute it and you get blue. You take chocolate, you dilute it, you get lilac. Now let's talk about the chocolate tort. So here we have solid chocolate, and here we have a chocolate that is one gene different. It is not allowing the color to extend fully in the hair shaft. You might think you have an orange rabbit if your rabbit looks like this, but it's not. Remember, orange is an agouti color. It would have the nose rings, the eye rings, and the white stomach, and you don't see that here. And if you look closely, you can see some shading the torts will have shading on their points around the mouth and the ears, and you see a little bit of chocolate shading. Now for the tan colors, and I say tan and they don't look tan, but it is called a tan-based color for the A-series gene. This is a black otter, 
broken black otter and then a broken blue otter. And these can be a little bit difficult to tell apart from some of the agoutis. For example, a broken opal compared with a broken blue otter can be very difficult to tell apart, especially because there's a lot of white on there. But an otter bunny should have a triangle of tan on the base of the neck, on the nape of the neck. And you can't see it in this picture. But black otter is pretty easy because there is not an agouti that looks similar to that. And then broken black otter. And you can see the tan ring around the nose too. That's a little bit different. So similar in markings on some of the otters. Finally, we have some of the really cool colors. And I guess there's nothing really exciting about a solid white bunny. So let's take a look at these guys first. But I still think they're neat. This is a ruby eye white. Notice white body, reddish eyes. Now some people really don't like this. This is my rabbit ruby. I know, not very creative with the name. I like this color. It is caused by the albino gene. And the albino gene essentially masks whatever your rabbit is genetically for their coloring. So if I bred her with another rabbit that didn't carry the albino gene, you could get a totally different color than what you see here because that albino gene takes away all of the pigment. These are blue-eyed whites, very similar to the ruby-eye white other than blue eyes instead of red. Albino gene causes the ruby-eye white and the Vienna gene causes the blue-eyed white. A blue-eyed white will have two copies of the Vienna gene. If they only have one copy of the Vienna gene, they can either hide that and look like a completely typical color or they can express that one Vienna gene and be a Vienna mark. So that will be a solid color or a broken color, but with some unusual markings. They could have blue eyes or they could have their normal eye color. They could have white spots on their ears, white ears, white spots on their body. Those tend to be clues that you might have a Vienna mark. And these are all caused by the Vienna gene. Finally, we have the Harlequin gene and the different variations that it can create. These Harlequin pictures are courtesy of my friends at Hot Cross Buns Hall and Lop. So thank you so much for sharing these. This is not a color that I have worked with. So I needed some sample photos and she was very helpful. This is a solid Harlequin and it does have an oranger, brighter orange color in person than what the photo is showing. And this is a nice two-tone face, really cute bunny. Another solid Harlequin. Now, if you add the broken gene to the Harlequin gene, you get what is called a tricolor. And in Holland Lops, these are showable, whereas the solid Harlequins are not. More tricolors. And then if you have a chinchilla-based Harlequin, you have a magpie. And these guys are super cute. It's more of a grayish and cream and white compared with the orange. And it's just a really cute, unique combination, I think. And then that's the broken version of the magpie. Now I mentioned checking to see if your rabbit has shading in the points to see if it might have a sable coloring or a tort coloring. Agouti markings would indicate the agouti gene. Something else to keep in mind is eye color. We talked about ruby eye whites and blue eyed whites, but the other bunnies, if they are not a dilute color, so if they're black based or chocolate based, their eyes will be a brown or black. But if they are a dilute color, a lilac base or a blue base, like this little broken blue here, this is my Yoshi, notice he has blue gray eyes. So if your bunny has bluish or grayish eyes and these can darken as they get older, but if they're not a black or a brown, then you probably have a dilute colored rabbit. So something in the blue family or the lilac family. And if you see agouti markings, then that gives you a clue you have the agouti gene. If you see shadings, then that tells you you very likely either have the sable gene or you might have a tort, which they also have shading. So those are just some clues to help figure out some of the most common colors in Holland Lops at least. I will put the link below to this color chart in case you would like to browse it further. And hopefully that may have helped you determine what color your rabbit is. For those of you who are willing to bear with me and are interested in learning a bit of rabbit color genetics, 
and diving into the different color groups, at least for Holland Lops, then that's what we're going to be talking about next. In addition to the very bare bones color chart on my website, I also have a color guide and it is a little bit more in depth. It talks about the different color groups of Holland Lops and a little bit about genetics. So we're going to be going over that page and talking a little bit about the color groups. I think rabbit coat colors and how the color is determined by the parents' genes will make a lot more sense to you if you understand this next concept. There are five sets of genes responsible for rabbit coat colors. They are A, B, C, D, and E. Now, capital letters mean that it is a dominant gene. It will trump all the other ones that are more recessive behind it. Sorry if that was a bad choice of words. Recessive genes that are less dominant are notated as lowercase letters. So each of these five genes is a set. So there are two sets of genes in the A series, two in the B, and so on through all five. And those gene sets, those five, control your rabbit's color, the color pattern that you see. So these genes make up your rabbit's genotype for their color. And the phenotype is what we actually see. The genotype you see on the screen is the most dominant. All capital letters for every set, A, B, C, D, and E. This is what is known as the chestnut color or wild rabbit color. Most of our wild rabbits are that brown color ticked with little bits of black. That's why chestnut is the most common color for a wild rabbit because those are the most dominant color genes. So you need to understand your rabbit's color is determined by these five sets of genes. Obviously, there are lots of other colors other than chestnut. So how do these happen? It's because there are mutations or variations in the genes. If you get a mama rabbit with a recessive gene and then the father rabbit with a recessive gene, they can pass both of these recessive genes on even if they're different recessive genes, whichever one is the most dominant will affect the phenotype or how it looks. If this seems too abstract, let me give you some examples. Let's say you have a male and a female chestnut rabbit. And for the D series of genes, they both carry the little d, which is dilute. And I'll get into that in a minute. So if both the mom and the dad carry the little d recessively behind the big D, the dents, then there is a 25% chance they will pass the recessive trait on to their offspring and it will show in the phenotype and the genotype because there are two recessive genes. There are no dominant genes overshadowing it. The resulting offspring could be big A, big B, big C, and then it will be double little d for the D series and then big E. And that rabbit would be the dilute version of chestnut, which is opal. So the different colors come about by recessive genes pairing together for any or all of the different five sets of genes. Let's talk a little bit about how each of these five gene sets affect rabbit color type. The A series affects the rabbit's color pattern. They are agouti, which is most dominant, and you probably have heard me say the term agouti in my previous videos because a lot of my rabbits do have the agouti gene. They have the white rings around their noses, the light color inside their ears, eye rings, their tummies are white. So that is the agouti gene. Then you have the tan pattern for the A series, and that's more recessive than the agouti. And then finally, the self pattern. These are going to be solid black, solid chocolate, solid blue, solid lilac. Those are the selfs. The B series is whether your rabbit is black based or brown based. All rabbits are either black based or brown based. If the black gets diluted, then it will be a blue based. And if the brown or chocolate gets diluted, then you have a lilac based color. The C series determines the amount of color in the hair shaft. 
In order of most dominant to least dominant, you have the full color gene, the chinchilla gene, the chinchilla light, and that's also known as the shaded gene, and that's where you get your sable points and your torts. Then you have the Himalayan gene, and then finally, the albino gene. If you've ever seen a white rabbit with red eyes, now some people don't like that, I think they're interesting, but that's the albino gene working its magic, and it actually hides every other gene in the rabbit's color genotype. And something similar happens with a blue-eyed white rabbit, but that is due to the Vienna gene and not the albino gene. I know it's very confusing, isn't it? The D series stands for dense or dilute. Dense is going to be dominant and that's going to be the black or the brown chocolate colors. The dilute colors are going to be turning black into blue and then turning chocolate into lilac. So lilac and blue based colors are results of the dilute gene on the D series for the color genes. If your rabbit is a grayish color, it's most likely a dilute color and that would be resulting from two recessive little d's dilutes on the D series. Finally, we have E and that stands for extension. How far up the hair shaft does the dark color extend? And that is determined by the E series. The capital E stands for full extension. That dark pigment is allowed to fully extend to the tip of the hair shaft. Now the most recessive in the E series is denoted by a lowercase e and that is non-extension. Now I work with a lot of orange and cream Holland Lops and they have the little e, the non-extension gene. And this is more apparent in the creams than the oranges because sometimes you do see some black ticking in the tops of the orange bunny's fur. Now that's not desired and it's known as smut. <laughs> that's what it's called. If you look at my cream rabbits, you don't see that dark coloring extending to the tips of the fur. Other colors such as frosties, sable points, and even torts also have this recessive non-extension gene. And then we have the harlequin gene that is actually more dominant to the non-extension gene. And this is where you get your harlequins and your tricolors. And I'll get into some examples of those later. It truly is amazing that you can just change one little aspect of these color gene sets and end up with a completely new color. I'll give you a couple more examples. To keep things simple, let's say that I know I have a male and a female chestnut rabbit and they both carry non-extension recessively on the E series. Using a Punnett square or a breeder square, I can predict the likelihood that the offspring will exhibit that recessive E series gene in non-extension. If my male rabbit is big E, the dominant full extension, and they carry the non-extension recessively, so that's big E, little e, and the dam or the mother is also big E, little e for the E series, then let's take a look at what they would likely pass on. The first possibility is that the mom and the dad both give the full extension, capital E. So the offspring would end up with two capital E's and it would display as full extension the same as the parents. And then you have two possibilities of one parent passing on the capital E full extension and the other parent passing on the non-extension, the little e. And then you have one possibility of both parents passing along that recessive little e non-extension. So one out of four or 25% of the offspring should be that non-extension. And then you would end up with big A, big B, big C, big D, but little e, double recessive little e, and that would display the phenotype of orange. That's how you get an orange rabbit. <laughs> Turn a chestnut non-extension with two recessive genes. <sighs> I hope you're not overwhelmed yet, but if you can replay that and understand those basic concepts of the recessive genes and how 
they can change the color of the rabbit just by changing any one of those five gene sets into something more recessive, less dominant, <laughs> then you change the color of the rabbit. Previously, we talked about the very basic color chart that I have on my website, and you may or may not have found a color similar to your own rabbits. So if you're not entirely sure what color your rabbit is still, this color guide that I have goes a little more in depth. When I talk about the different color groups for Holland Lops, you might have that aha moment where you figure out at least what group your rabbit's color likely belongs to. Taking a look at these groups can help you to figure out what your rabbit is. On the left, you will see eight different color groups for the various Holland Lop colors. Now these color groups are determined by the American Rabbit Breeders Association and they do vary a bit between breeds, though there is a lot of overlap. This is by no means comprehensive, but it does give you a lot of different examples, especially of the most common colors. Within each group are the different variations based on whether they are black, blue, chocolate, or lilac-based colors. Let's first look at these three groups on the bottom. The ticked group. This is not a common group, and I have not worked with any of these bunnies, so I don't have photos for you. But these will look like black, blue, chocolate, or lilac rabbits, but then the very tip of the hair shaft will have either a gold or a silver color. You can research that to see examples, but again, it's not very common. The next group is pointed white. The best example I can give is my rabbit, Mabel. Now, Mabel is a sable point. She is not a pointed white, but she does look very similar to the color pattern that I'm trying to explain to you. You have that bright white body, and then the points are the very dark colors, or it could be the blue or the lilac. Believe it or not, there is actually a group for broken colored rabbits. And it doesn't really make sense to me because in my mind, I'm thinking about the phenotypes or what we see. And I just group the broken blacks, the broken blues, etc., into the groups up above that they belong to. So that's what I'm going to do. But I just want to mention that broken is actually a separate group. And by broken, I mean you have a white rabbit with the solid color mixed in, kind of looks like spots sometimes. That's called a broken. It's a pattern broken with the white. Now let's look at the five more common color groups. Starting with the self colors. These will be your solid black, solid blue, solid chocolate, and solid lilac. And then also includes ruby eyed white and blue eyed white. And here are some examples solid black. Now I'm also going to include the broken black here. Solid blue, which looks like a dark gray. Notice you don't see shading on the points. You don't see nose rings, eye rings, white stomachs. A solid self rabbit will not have those markings. Here's the broken version of blue. This is my Yoshi. Notice the blue, the dilute colors will have blue gray eyes most of the time. And the non-dilute colors, your black based or your chocolate based, will have dark eyes, usually dark brown. Though the flash makes it look lighter, it's actually a dark brown. And here is chocolate with lilac. Lilac and blue can sometimes be a little bit difficult to distinguish. If you're not sure if you have blue based or lilac based, most likely you have blue because it is more dominant. This photo, which I showed before, is a really good illustration of the difference between blue and lilac. You can see that the lilac does just have a lilac tinge to it, I guess. I think of it more as a pinkish hue versus the blue, which is more of a bluish hue to it. So this is black, blue, here's the lilac. Don't pay attention to this guy, that's a chocolate tort. Doesn't belong in this group. So black, blue, lilac, and then chocolate. Also in this group are the ruby eye whites and the blue eye whites. So the ruby eye white here, you have your ruby colored eyes and the white body. This is caused by the albino gene and it actually masks the color your bunny truly is. Unless you breed your ruby eye white, you're not going to know what true color your rabbit is hiding genetically. And then the blue eyed white is caused by the Vienna gene 
not the albino gene, but you have your blue eyes and your solid white bodies. The self group is double recessive for the A series. You have two little A's for the A set in the color genotype. Next, we have the shaded group. Like the name says, you will see shading on your rabbit. This is either caused by the chinchilla light gene on the C series or a combination of the double recessive A gene on the A series and the non-extension double recessive on the E series. So little a, little a, little e, little e. Together, they can make your torts, your black tort, blue tort, chocolate, and lilac tort. Black tort is one of the most common colors. I'll show you examples here in a second. But then you also have shading caused by the chinchilla light or sable or shaded gene. And there you will have your sable points, seals, Siamese sables, smoke pearls, and like I said, there are other colors as well. Let's take a look at some pictures. Here are the shaded colors. This is one of the most common colors in Holland Lops. You might have a solid version or the broken version mixed with white. If black tort rabbits were a Crayola crayon color, I would say burnt sienna is a very close color. Take a look at the saddle area on top of the body, on the back. It's kind of a burned orange color. And then the shading is black, brownish black. They will have dark colored eyes. They will not have white circles around their noses or their eyes, no white stomach, but you do see the dark shading on their points. This is a cute picture because we have two black based colors on the right and then two blue based or the dilute versions on the left. So you have solid black. The dilute version is solid blue. This is solid black tort or tortoise shell. And this is the dilute version. This is blue tort. These are the dominant dense versions and these are the recessive dilute versions. This is a chocolate tort. Now you might think it's orange, but it's not. Notice there are no white, no circle, no eye circle, and the stomach is not white. This is a chocolate tort. And there is some darker shading in these areas here. And that is the tort version of chocolate. So a little bit different genetically. The chocolate has the big E for full extension, so it allows that color to extend fully on the hair shafts, and that is recessive for the chocolate tort. So here's another blue tort. This is my broken blue tort that a lot of you remember. This was Anna, and you can see she has a little bit of orange cast up on her back, kind of like the black tort. And then on her points, it is a darker version. And instead of black, this is gonna be blue because she's a blue tort. So it kind of looks like gray and then an orangish gray on the other areas of her body. This is a broken Siamese sable. So it's a dark brown and then the points are almost black. The broken version brings the white, but you can imagine what the solid version would look like. It's that really pretty brown. I love this color. And then the points are, they're almost black. It's a dark brown color. That's caused by the sable gene or shaded gene. This is a sable point, very common color, but the shading on the body can vary. A true sable point will have a bright body, almost white like Mabel's here, but a lot of times the rabbit will actually be a seal point and they will have an extra copy of that sable gene and you'll see some darker brown. It just won't be that nice clean white, but a lot of times you see people call that a sable point. And then if you take the sable point and you dilute it, you get blue point. And again, because this is a dilute version, notice the grayish bluish eyes. Sable point has the brown eyes. Blue point has the blue gray eyes. To the top of the chart, we have the agouti group. Now this group for the A series is going to be the dominant big A. That's the agouti gene. Now the other genes can vary a bit. These are your chestnuts, chinchillas, your opals, your squirrels. And then we have some of the more unique colors such as chocolate agouti, chocolate chinchilla, the lynx, which is the lilac version of the chestnut. And then the lilac version of chinchilla is lilac chinchilla. Again, these are very unusual colors. Let's take a look at some examples. Here are your agouti rabbits. The most 
dominant rabbit color, as we discussed earlier, is actually chestnut. Chestnut is the brown. It has some black ticking on the hair shafts. This is a really cute baby. <laughs> I love it sitting up there on that combine. If you take chestnut and dilute it, you get opal. This is my rabbit moose, and you can see he's kind of a gray color. And look at these telltale agouti markings on the nose, the chin, the stomach is white. He has white eye circles as well. If you have a baby Holland Lop and you're not sure what the color is, now when they're first born, it's very difficult to tell because they're naked, they have no fur, but after a few days, they will start to get fur. And then it is wonderful to have these agouti markings because it really can help to determine at least the color group for the rabbit. So you have the solid black and they look almost identical to chestnuts at birth, except for you can see these white insides of the ears and the orange will have it too because it has the agouti gene, even though it's not in the agouti group. So it's a very easy gene to see just like the shaded gene has the shading the agouti gene has those telltale markings here's a broken chestnut look at the nose ring this is a charlie chestnut that just means less than 10 percent color so you have your solid colors and then you have the broken color which is mixed with white but if there is less than 10 percent that's called a charlie and you get that when they have two copies of the broken gene instead of one or none this is chinchilla that's a black based agouti color like chestnut you see the black ticking broken chinchilla look at the nose ring now you take chinchilla and you dilute it and you get squirrel it's a funny name, I know, because most squirrels are brown, but in rabbit, squirrel is a silvery gray, lighter than the opal. You will see some agouti markings, really cute color. Those are just some of the most common agouti colors in Holland Lops. Let's go down to the tan pattern. These are going to be your otters, black, blue, chocolate, and lilac otter. No, they're not actually otters, that's just the color. Let's look at some examples. I know what you're thinking. The tan group should have a lot of tan rabbits and it doesn't. It's a little bit of a misnomer. Here is a black otter. You do see some markings similar to the agoutis with the eye circles, the nose rings, and the chin and the stomach. But if you look on the back of their necks, at the nape of the neck, you will see a tannish triangle area and their fur, and that can help you to differentiate otters from the agouti colors. Now, black otter is pretty distinct. This is a blue otter, the dilute version. Another blue otter, and these pictures are courtesy of Hickory Ridge Hollands because I have only worked with a couple different otters. Here is one of mine. Here is a broken blue otter, so similar to the black, just broken pattern, and then the blue, which is a dilute, looks grayish and again if you have a dilute color blue based or lilac based you will see the blue gray eyes compared with the brownish eyes for the black base colors so you take an otter and you add the chinchilla gene instead of the big c full color gene and you have a black silver martin really cute bunny and that is the black silver martin as a baby Finally, we have my favorite color group, and these are the wideband colors. Now, in this group, the only color that actually has the wideband gene is the red. Red has the wideband gene and really deep, intense coloring caused by high Rufus modifiers. I know that's a funny word, Rufus modifiers, but reds are very unusual in Holland Lops. I've actually never worked with them and I don't have any pictures of them, but think of an orange rabbit, but just really intense, deep coloring. And the stomach will have that similar deep coloring. It won't have the pale white stomach like an orange rabbit does that I will show you here in a second. But wide band rabbits will have the agouti gene. They all have the agouti gene, so big A and double recessive on the E, so non-extension, that coloring cannot be allowed to extend. 
And then for the C series, they are big C full color, or they can be chinchilla coloring as well. I have lots of examples from the wideband color group. I really love the orange Holland Lops, and this is what I started with. This is my rabbit pumpkin when she was a baby. Because the wideband group does have the agouti gene, you will see the agouti markings around the nose and eyes and under their stomachs, in their ears. This is my rabbit golden boy, one of my first rabbits. He's a gorgeous orange, beautiful type. He looks like a bulldog, doesn't he? He has massive head, very compact, stumpy little guy. Love him. He has very pretty orange coloring. Sometimes your orange rabbits will have some black mixed in. I'll show you here in a second. And that is called smut. And it's not desirable. It has to do with the Rufus modifiers. So there is orange compared with cream. Broken cream, actually. That's my sunny gem. So that is an orange with some smut. Look at the ears and you can see some black tinges in his fur. It's not ideal, but it's actually pretty common. Here is my Camilla. This is broken orange and you can still see her little agouti markings there. This is a Charlie orange. So two copies of the broken gene and you get less than 10% color and doesn't even have a full butterfly on the nose here. Very cute. You can see some darkness in the orange there. Orange will have brown eyes because it is not a dilute color. The cream, which is dilute, will have the blue-gray eyes. Here are some chestnuts on the left, a black in the middle, and then you have the little orange over here. This is my Cora when she was little. This is the dilute version of orange. You can still see her no circle there. And she has less of the smut. That's pretty typical of the cream coloring. It's a cleaner color usually, and that will darken as they get older. Broken cream. This is a broken Frosty. This is my bunny Luna that I had years ago with her litter. She has a broken orange and that's also a wideband color. There's a broken Frosty in there and she has a Charlie Chinchilla I believe and this guy ended up being what I believe is a Blue Seal Agouti and I won't get into that because it's a bit complex. If you have a Chinchilla Rabbit and instead of that full extension on the E-Series, you make it a non-extension, then you have a Frosty. It is a chinchilla-based color. Really gorgeous gray and white mix. You can have a solid Frosty, a Broken, or a Charlie. And when they're little, they don't have much coloring. So it can be very difficult to see that coloring until they mature a bit. And here Luna is with two orange babies. Now you might be wondering, how did she have orange babies? Well, you take a Frosty and to turn it orange, you just remove that chinchilla gene and full C is dominant to chinchilla. So I paired her with an orange and that trumped her chinchilla gene and you got oranges. And then you also have your Harlequin and the broken version of that, which is tricolor, as well as magpie, which is the chinchilla based version of the Harlequin. Now that we have gone over the basic color chart, the more in-depth color guide that's based on the color groups, as well as I have introduced some basics of rabbit color genetics, I'm gonna give you a little quiz. I'm going to show you some rabbits and I want you to look for some of the hints I have talked about. Color patterns, eye color. See if you can tell either the color or the color group that the rabbit belongs to. First, I will start by looking at the eyes. I see that they are brown and not a blue or gray color. So I know the rabbit is black based or brown based and is not a dilute color. Second, I notice some agouti markings. I notice some lightness on the chin that looks like it goes to the belly area looks like there might be some eye circles too though it's a bit difficult to tell because this is a baby and I can't see in the ears to see if there is white in the ears but actually there is because I know this bunny's color
obviously you see the bright orange coloring. This belongs to the wideband group, even though it has the agouti jean. Don't be fooled by that. And the color is orange. How about this rabbit? Can you tell me the color group and or the color? I see dark eyes, so I know it's black or chocolate based. I see the nose ring, I see lightness under the chin, I can't see the stomach, and I do see some lightness around the eyes. That tells me the agouti gene is present. And I see color extending the full length of that hair shaft. I see some ticking too. That tells me this belongs to the agouti group. And the color is chestnut, solid chestnut to be specific. This is the most dominant color in rabbits. How about this little guy? I know this one might be a little bit too easy. Dark eyes, no agouti markings, no shading, just looks like a solid color. This is a self group and the color is solid black. How about this bunny? Color group and or color. The eyes are a little bit difficult to tell. They look dark to me, but I can't decide for certain. I do not see a nose ring around the bunny, but I do notice the points are shaded. The ears, the nose, looks like maybe the feet there as well. Lighter color on the body. I know that this bunny belongs to the shaded group. The specific color is sable point. How about the color group and color for this guy? Right away, his shading is apparent, and I picked this picture so you could see his belly. It's not a solid white. You see a little bit of lightness here and there, but the points give it away that this is a shaded color. You can see the dark brown eyes there. One of the most common colors in Holland Lops, this is a black tort. What about this fuzzball? This, by the way, is what happens when you introduce the fuzzy gene, which a lot of Holland Lops do carry recessively. So if you get two Holland Lops that carry the fuzzy gene, you can end up with a fuzzy Holland, very similar to the American Fuzzy Lop. They're very fuzzy and you have to do a lot of brushing, but they're super cute. Look at the color. What do you think the color group and color is? Before you say orange, Look carefully at the face. Look how it's a little bit darker here compared with up here. Yes, this belongs to the shaded group and it is a broken black tort. So you can see how simply adding the broken gene to the mix can make things a lot more difficult, especially if there is a lot of white on the bunny. I always tell people to first look for the absence or presence of agouti markings. You see no nose ring here, so that tells you it's not an agouti color. It's not a wide band color. So orange is out of the picture because you don't see those agouti markings. You see some shading and that definitely helps to narrow it down. I know this isn't the best picture, but I wanted to give you something a little bit less common. The first thing you should notice is the blue eye. So this rabbit, you know, has the Vienna gene. If it had two copies, it would be a blue eyed white. But since you see some color there, you know there is 
one copy of the Vienna Jean. Sometimes they can hide it, but this little guy has those white ears and blue eyes. So you know this is a Vienna mark, but what color Vienna mark? You see the brown, you see some black ticking mixed in there. That's a full extension color. And if you look really closely around the eye, you can see a light circle around there. That is the chestnut color. So this is a broken chestnut Vienna mark. This is one of Cora's babies from a few years ago. What color group and color? No shading, no agouti markings. This is a self color group. I see grayish eyes, so I know it's a Duluth color, either blue based or lilac based. I do not see any tinges of the reddish pink. This is a solid blue. And finally, we have a bonus question for you. These are two solid chestnut Holland Lot babies. They're ridiculously cute, aren't they? Can you tell me the color genotype for chestnut. If you've watched this whole video, hopefully you will be able to tell me. There are five sets in the color genotype and the chestnut is the most dominant for every set. Capital A, capital B, capital C, D, and E. It doesn't matter if they're carrying something else recessively because the first gene does the talking when it's dominant. If you got that right, let me know in the comments below. It's kind of a tricky one. Whew, that was a lot of information, wasn't it? It was a bit abstract and I hope I explained it in a manner that you were able to understand and at least get the gist that there are five sets of genes that determine the rabbit's color and it's those recessive genes on any one of those gene sets or all of the gene sets that create the different color combinations. And you can take a look at the color chart on my website or the color guide if you want a more in-depth look at the different color groups. And even if you can't ascertain your rabbit's specific color, you might be able to determine at least the color group that your rabbit belongs to. And again, I do recommend getting a copy of the American Rabbit Breeders Association Standard of Perfection, this little book, if you want to know more about your breed or about bunny colors if you want to know more about color genetics. And this to me is really fascinating stuff. Now it's not light reading, but it's laid out in a very user-friendly manner. Today's video was sponsored by the brand spanking new Hooks Holland's Merchandise Shop, where you can score some pretty sweet bunny merch like this, but actually printed on the shirt or hoodie, mug, bag, sticker, poster. I even have some Holland Lop designs in the most common coat colors like you saw in this video. That's right, after I'm done cleaning up bunny poop, I start my job as a graphic designer. But don't worry, my poopy hands don't touch your merch. I leave that up to Spreadshop and they don't have poopy hands, I don't think. Hop on over and check it out. Oh man, that was cheesy.